Hello everyone, I'm all excited today because I'm starting my first full long-term save of the FM23 cycle as I look to take a team from Tier 8 of the English Football Pyramid all the way to the top in what I'm calling Tier 8 to Greatness. And I've gone with the team in Tier 8 closest to where I live, which is Wroxham FC. So, let's go and take a look at them, shall we? Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to episode 1 of Tier 8 to Greatness. I have chosen Wroxham FC as they are the closest team in Tier 8 to where I live, approximately 10 miles from my house to their ground at Trafford Park. Um, for those of you who don't know, Wroxham is a small village around 8 miles northeast of Norwich. It lies on the Norfolk Broads on the River Bure. It's sometimes known as the capital of the Broads, although there are other places that will dispute that. Um, and yeah, Wroxham... FC play in Wroxham, obviously. Um, I go past the turn into their ground every day when I go to work, so I thought it'd be a good idea and something fun to dig into a team that are not actually in the proper game of Football Manager, the base game. Um, so using a custom database I've downloaded, I have taken over as Wroxham FC manager. As you can see here, Wroxham today confirmed the appointment of Peter Reynolds as the club's new manager. And, yeah, we'll have a little look. It doesn't bode too well that we're predicted to battle against relegation in Tier 8. But we'll see how it goes. If we click the next, you can see that we have half a star reputation. So that's not very good, is it? Um, everything's vacant by the looks of it. Danny Clark, the chairperson, says, Welcome to Roxham. It's great to have you here as part of your induction. We're going to our welcome pack. Trafford Park. The ground, 2,500 capacity. Poor training. Poor youth and limited youth recruitment. So our facilities are rubbish, which is probably to be expected in a Tier 8 side. And if you see where their ground is, you'll see that they ain't going to have much in the way of facilities. Uh, we booked our place in the Ishmian Division 1 North by winning promotion from the Eastern Counties League Premier Division last season. So we will enter the FA Cup at the extra preliminary round. We are in the first round of the Velocity Cup. And the first qualifying round of the Isuzu FA Trophy. Our finances are okay. We have zero transfer budget and a wage budget of £1,680 per week. Which we'll have a look at and see if there's anything to spend. The club enjoyed probably their best spell of success during the 1990s. Although now enduring a 10 year barren spell having not won a competition since 2012. The Yachtsman, which is our nickname by the way, still have a history of which they can be justly proud. Roxham finished runners-up in the Isuzu FA Vars in 2010, won the English ninth tier on eight occasions and finished runners-up on four occasions. So we have a little bit of history and we were founded in 1892, which the club's been around for a long, long time. Right, club vision. Our ball culture is to strive to make progress on and off the pitch, work within our wage budget, avoid relegation, be competitive in the FA Cup, which I'm not sure what be competitive means, to be honest. I think it just means don't get beat 10-0, something like that. Be competitive in all the competitions. Um, and then the end, well, basically our five-year plan is just to stay in the division that we're in. But that isn't what I want to do because that ain't going to be tier 8 to greatness, is it? If we just stay in the same division over and over and over and over again, I ain't made no progress. The series will stagnate and, yeah, it don't really move forward. So hopefully we'll do a lot better than what the board want us to do. Supporters also want us to strive to make progress on and off the pitch and avoid relegation. So basically all I've got to do this season is avoid relegation. But as I said, I want to try and do a little bit more than that. The way this series is going to work is start off in Tier 8. I want it to be a one-club save. If I get the sack from this club, series is over. I may then transition into a journeyman with the same save and move on to a different club. But the Tier 8 to greatness save will be over. Right, the squad. Now, there are some players here who are fictional players. Most of the players here are real life. But there are some omissions and I haven't used the editor to go in and change anything around and add players or anything like that because I didn't want anyone to accuse me of cheating and making the players better than what they actually are in real life. So what I've done is I've gone with what the database is. Um, Josh Hazel, Ryan Hawkins, Simon Lappin, Harley Black, they're all real players So and they're our best players as well. Josh Hazel is our star player, central defender, 23 years old, plays 
as a central defender and defend. He can play as a no-nonsense centre-back, wide centre-back and a ball-playing defender. Has very good attributes for this level. 15 jumping reach, 15 determination, 12 marking, 10 heading, 11 positioning. He's quite quick as well, so he's going to be a very important player for us. Ryan Hawkins, also five-star current ability. 27-year-old winger who can also play as a pressing forward, target forward, advance forward, poacher. So he's going to be another one who's extremely important to what we're trying to achieve. Um, again, decent pace. First touch, dribbling, crossing, passing, finishing of nine as well. So another very good player at this level. Simon Lappin, 39-year-old defensive winger, is a fringe player but has five-star current and five-star potential. So he can also cover as a ball-winning midfielder, central midfielder, Carrillero, box-to-box. Literally five-star across the board, really. Absolutely phenomenal attributes for this, this level. 11 stamina, but like I said, he's 39 years old, so I'm not sure how long we're going to have him in the team for. Harley Black is next. He's another star player. And Harry Pitcher is a star player. So Harley Black, midfielder, deep line playmaker, central midfielder, Mazala. Free kick taking a 15, which could come in handy at this level. And Harry Pitcher, 19-year-old, fullback, but can also play up front, which is a little bit weird. So right, he's a natural right back, but also a natural striker. So very versatile. Decent attributes and could come in handy. Other than that, we're starting to struggle because Jamie Forshaw is our next player. Regular start, a 31-year-old winger who can play as a striker as well. But three-star current, three-star potential. Hasn't really got the greatest, although he's got decent natural fitness, decent pace, a little bit of flair, and he's a good penalty taker. So he could come in handy. Other than that, yeah, we're looking at trying to improve. We've got Robbie Linford and Connolly Pointer who have over three-star current, um, three-star potential even, and George Cousins who has three-star potential. But that there, from there, Jackson Ram down to the grayed-out players, we need to replace, which means we need a new goalkeeper, probably another striker, a left-back, some midfielders. We've got if we look, if we, we can't really even include Conley Pointer at the minute because he's only a one star. So if we look at minimum two star current ability, we have that. What's that? Two, four, seven players. So I'm going to go and have a look at the finances and see if we can try and get some money together to try and bring in some players. We may not have many players in the squad, but we do have quite a bit of wage budget left. Our wage budget is £1,680 a week. We're only spending £657 per week. So we have over £1,000 in wage budget available to try and add some players. Um, we have no debt or anything like that, which is good. So, yeah, finances are quite stable. We don't have a transfer budget, but we don't really need one, to be honest. Um... We've got 100% of transfer revenue made until 2 million revenue has been generated. Thereafter, this will drop to 60%. Next year's minimum guaranteed transfer budget will be zero. Um, and the wage budget for next season will be 1.7 thousand. So we've got 94,000 scouting budget. Well, 94,500 scouting budget. So we can have a little look around and see if we can find some decent players to add to the squad, which is what I'm going to do now. Trying to sign players in the lower divisions is like walking through a minefield because I've managed to get in a few, but I've probably had about 12 or 14 players that I've put offers in for that have ended up going somewhere else. And the annoying thing about it is a lot of them I took on trial. They hadn't played. Some of them hadn't played for two years. And as soon as I put a bid in, someone else comes in and puts a bid in. Um, there are a lot of really good players, like four, four and a half star, five star potential or current ability and potential players that would have made our team a whole lot better and they didn't come through. But let's look at the ones we have signed. The first player through the door is one for the future, really. Adam Brumby, he's 18 year old left back. Um, he's coming. He's got a couple of decent attributes now. 
um, but he's only one and a half star current ability. So the chances of him playing that much are quite slim. Although I don't have much options in that in that position, so he could play a lot more than I think he's going to. Nana Adarqua is the next one can play. An attacking midfielder on the left is a natural. He's also accomplished on the right, and he can cover up front if needs be. He's quick. He's got decent leadership and determination. He's got okay attributes for this level. Um, and although he was the second choice, I did look at a player called Tendi Quamina. Um, I took him on trial. He was a whole lot better. I think he was like four and a half star current ability. I offered him a contract. He went somewhere else. But a dark with a 21-year-old signed. Next up, Jack Birchall. He is a central defender, three-star current, possible five-star um, potential. 18 determination. He's six foot. He's got okay jumping, reach, and heading. Decent or very good natural fitness. Um, very good positioning. And decent all-round ability, really. Um and I needed someone to partner Josh Hazel at centre-back. Jacob Skinner. Now, he's come in and people have sort of moaned, the fans have moaned about it straight away. Um, he's a left-back. He's 28 years old. Only one and a half star current ability. He was a little bit of a panic buy because I need to get some left-backs. I haven't got any left-backs. So now I think I'm going to end up with a team full of one and a half star ones. Julian Sarmiento Ramirez has come in. He's a le another left winger who can play on the right. He can also play as a natural midfielder on the left as well. 16 flair, determined leadership, off the ball is good. Techniques, great. First touch is great. He's got a decent pace. He's only 19 years old. Possible five-star um, potential, three-star current. And is a very, very good player. And the last one, Reese Mallet. We needed a goalkeeper. We took, I think, five. I think we took five goalkeepers on trial. And all of them ended up going somewhere else. Um, we did have one, Ethan Dorr. I think he was like a four-star current ability. He looked very, very good. But we've ended up with a one-and-a-half-star current ability player. Um, basically signed because he is better than our half-a-star goalkeeper that we had. And he's got decent potential, so hopefully in a year or two he will be a whole lot better if he indeed becomes our number one. But that is all the signings. We're already out of the FA Cup. I thought I'd play that off camera. Didn't really want to start the season with an FA Cup extra preliminary round. And we lost 3-2 to Helston. Um, Forshaw scored a goal. I moved Hawkins up front in place of Forshaw a bit later on, and he scored late on. But this player here, Ruben Wilson, scored a hat-trick against us. And because of that, I've sent a scout to look at him. So for the next episode, or in a couple of episodes' time, he might be our key striker. Um, for now... I'm going to go and see if I can sign any more players. We are on the eve of the season starting. We start at home to Haybridge. And hopefully, by the time you come back, we would have a couple of decent players and we would have made a decent start to the season. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get the season started, see if I can get a bit of a tactical thing going try and find a couple more players to fit into our system. And also, I need to appoint an assistant manager because I still haven't managed to get one of them. So I think that's going to wrap up this episode for now. I know not a lot's really happened in this episode. You've just seen a bit of like what players we've got, this, that and the other. Um, but hopefully, you will come back again and join me for the next episode and beyond as we get our season underway. Right, people, thank you very much for watching this episode. I know it's only a short one and not much has really happened, but it was just an introduction to Wroxham FC and the players that hopefully are going to keep us in this division, possibly push on a little bit further than that. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel so that you see future videos, comment below just to say hi, and yeah, help me, help me to continue building the channel as... I go on. Um, anyway, thank you again for watching. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.